All right. Thanks, Franzi, and a huge thank you to the Conference for the Best Paper Award. I'm Alex Alderman, and uh, incidents involving election technology and processes occur during practically every election cycle. Voters see headlines like these reporting technical glitches as officials scramble to reassure the public. But such incidents are rarely formally investigated. This is a lost opportunity to improve election accuracy and uphold public trust. Other fields that prioritize safety and reliability, like uh, transportation, uh, structural engineering, and increasingly computer security, routinely conduct post-incident investigations. These seek to determine and correct underlying causes, to uh, uncover related issues, disseminate lessons, and prevent recurrence. Crucially, they are typically not about establishing blame. My goal in this work is to establish a model for such rigorous, independent, and nonpartisan post-incident investigations within the election space. Perhaps the most consequential election technology incident in recent years occurred in Antrim County, Michigan during the 2020 presidential election. The county's election night results were badly and obviously wrong. They showed Joe Biden and other Democrats winning this solidly Republican county by a landslide. Officials quickly issued a correction, assuring the public that the problems were the result of a, quote, software update that mistakenly hadn't been applied to the Dominion voting machines. Um, but the damage had been done. The incident spawned conspiracy theories that were seized on by President Trump and have undermined confidence in elections to this day. In the immediate aftermath, a legal team linked to the Trump campaign sued in state court and was granted access to perform a forensic investigation of Antrim's voting system. Within only a week, uh, a group called Allied Security Operations Group had produced a report claiming to have discovered evidence that the Dominion machines were, quote, intentionally and purposefully designed to facilitate fraud. The attorney behind that lawsuit, Matthew DiPerno, is now the presumptive Republican nominee for Michigan Attorney General. And as of this week, he is reportedly under investigation himself for breaching the security of voting equipment. Um, but when ASOG's forensic report first became public, DiPerno called on President Trump to um, act. And it was unclear at the time what that meant. But the Congressional Committee investigating the events of January 6th obtained a draft executive order, never issued by President Trump, that cites ASOG's findings in Antrim as a basis to authorize the military to seize voting machines. In response to the ASOG report, Michigan's Secretary of State and Attorney General asked me to perform an independent forensic investigation of the Antrim incident. I sought to determine what caused the errors, whether they were evidence of an attack or foul play, if they had been fully corrected, and whether they were likely to affect other localities. And also, what should be done to prevent such issues in the future? The state published my complete findings in March 2021. Before we get into what caused the incident, let me explain how Antrim's election system works. The county uses an election management system that consists of a Windows 10 PC running Dominion Democracy Suite software. This EMS is used before each election to prepare election definitions, which are data files that describe what's on the ballot, and afterwards to combine the results from uh, 18 ballot scanners at local precincts across the county. There's no network connectivity, but instead files are distributed and returned using compact flashcards. Each scanner outputs both uh, electronic records of every ballot and also a paper pull tape summarizing the number of votes for each candidate. For my investigation, I was provided copies of the EMS hard drive, the scanner memory cards, and the pull tapes. I also reverse engineered the undocumented Dominion file formats and software and built new tools to analyze them. All right, so what did we find? I used logs from the scanners and EMS first to reconstruct events before the election. In September, county staff had approved the ballot designs for printing, and they loaded the election definitions onto the EMS and the scanners as usual. However, 
In early October, errors were discovered in three of the ballot designs. For instance, in one precinct, the ballot showed a school board contest for the wrong district. Workers revised the election definitions and ordered new ballots printed, and they loaded the revised election definitions into the EMS, but only updated two of the 18 scanners. This would prove to be a consequential mistake. The first sign of trouble, though, didn't happen until election night, when workers loaded the results from the scanner memory cards into the EMS. Three cards failed to load, despite multiple attempts. Rather than investigating, election staff manually entered these results from the poll tapes, and this process took until 4 o'clock in the morning. Working so late at night, the staffers, kind of understandably, neglected to closely review the countywide results before publishing them. Later that morning, however, the county was told by outsiders that the results were obviously wrong. Staff took them down and manually entered the remaining results from the poll tapes to correct them. So what caused the major errors? I was able to determine the cause by reviewing the election definitions and the result files. What happened is that internally, the Dominion system represents each possible choice across every ballot style with a sequential ID number. The correction to the school board race necessitated inserting an additional choice, which caused the ID of every subsequent candidate throughout the county to increase by one. Scanners that weren't updated used the old IDs. When the EMS interpreted their results using the new IDs, it assigned the votes to the wrong candidates. As you can see here on the right, in the presidential race, the effect was essentially that for affected precincts, Biden received the votes cast for Trump, and Trump received the votes cast for the libertarian candidate, and so on down the ballot. So I confirmed that the major errors had been corrected uh, using several different tests, each of which produced the expected results. First, I loaded each card into the EMS using the matching election definition. I also counted the votes from the memory cards directly myself using software I wrote without reliance on the EMS. Finally, I personally and by hand added up the individual results from the scanner poll tapes across the county and got exactly the same as the final results. In addition, the State Bureau of Elections manually recounted all of the votes from the presidential race using the original paper ballots. Based on these different tests, we can be very sure that the mismatched election definitions caused the large discrepancies and that Donald Trump won Antrim County by nearly 4,000 votes. Unfortunately, the mismatched election definition was not the only problem with Antrim's results. The county ultimately reported results five times, sometimes changing candidates' totals by thousands of votes. After the initial erroneous results, the county manually entered totals from the poll tapes, but staff failed to remove all of the old data. Uh, the officially certified results corrected this, but the manual data entry still contained typos that affected nearly 2.6% of votes statewide. And this is despite the fact that Michigan law requires county canvassers to compare the official results to the poll tapes before certifying them. Some of the typos were corrected in a fourth set of results, but others remained and were only corrected in the final set of results published on November 21st. Despite the unusual attention that Antrim received, I found that even the final certified results still contain errors that affect certain down-ballot races. One problem was simply that many mail-in voters first received the misprinted ballots and were only later sent corrected ones. Some returned each version, but there was no process to separate them, and the scanners were not programmed to be able to tell them apart. Targets for certain contests moved between the designs, so the scanners miscounted these votes on either the initial or the revised ballots, depending on which election definition was in use. Fortunately, I was able to bound the number of votes that were affected, and no outcome was changed. However, I also uncovered a different error that quite possibly did change the outcome of one local contest in the final results. Central Lake Township scanned its ballots twice because the scanner was initially programmed with the wrong school board race. In the first scan, a local marijuana initiative failed in a tie, but in the second scan, it passed by one vote. 
Why the difference? Well, I recovered partial records that suggest that, the, that during the second scan, whether correctly or due to human error, one particular ballot was omitted that would have changed the results. Despite the narrow margin, nobody challenged the outcome within the statutory time frame, so the final results will stand forever. While my analysis was not a security review, I did note or confirm several security problems with the EMS along the way. All users shared a single Windows login with administrator privileges, allowing them to alter logs or bypass access controls. Um, SQL Management Studio was installed, allowing users to directly alter the election databases. The Windows security updates were more than two years out of date, and the security log from the election day had been discarded because the log had reached a fixed maximum size. The EMS also did not use full disk encryption. These issues are all real security problems and should be mitigated promptly, but it's important to note that there is no evidence that they were ever exploited in Antrim. So ultimately, my investigation was able to account for all known anomalies in Antrim's results, including several that I discovered myself. All arose from human error during unusual circumstances involving ballot design changes at the last minute, which are unlikely to have occurred widely elsewhere. Although the major errors have been fully corrected, I determined that certain down-ballot contests still contain smaller errors. Several opportunities to discover um, the problems were missed due to further human errors, including ones in processes that are important safeguards for security and accuracy, such as logic and accuracy testing and pre-certification canvassing. The election software also certainly could have done more to prevent the human errors from affecting results, but there's no basis to conclude it was deliberately designed to facilitate fraud. Based on this understanding of the events in Antrim County, I make a number of recommendations. The common theme is to bring a more scientific mindset to election administration, such as by reviewing and strengthening procedural fail-safes and improving usability for poll workers, both of which are problems that badly need more attention from our research community. I also suggest steps to facilitate post-election forensics by creating and better preserving digital records. Finally, I recommend that future election incidents, when they occur as they inevitably will, um, should be followed by uh, officials conducting rigorous post-election investigations to ensure the problems are understood and that lessons are shared to prevent recurrence. I hope this work can serve as a model for such efforts. Thank you.